A lawyer who represents small businesses once complained to me. My client says, let's use this and this argument in our defense in court. I respond, when we were in court a couple of years ago, we used the opposite argument in our defense. If our opponents will dig it up, our whole case will fall apart. Then the client says, let us use this and this argument. But everyone knows that you run your business contrary to the principles of this argument. How can we use it? So what should I do? exclaims the client. Well, choose the principles according to which you want to run your business and follow them. Picking and choosing rules, whichever ones will justify your behavior at this moment, is not a way to go. According to Pew Research, in the US, the polarization of opinions on social and political issues is increasing every year at a dramatic pace. The study conducted by the EU paints the same picture about Europe. It is interesting that each side refers to the moral principles and ethical values when explaining why they oppose the other side. Does this mean that they follow different moral principles? As we saw in my last week's video, there are many different systems of moral values in the secular world. Or maybe they just pick and choose the morals that suit their claim at that moment. Why not? There are many different moral codes and their society has never determined which one of them they follow. In the last video, we saw that in the debate about which principles Israel should live by, it is necessary for two sides to propose specific ideologies that they want the law to follow. To pick and choose the laws when you want to justify what you want is not a way to go. You may not like the ideas of those who advocate for Israel to follow the Torah, but at least they propose specific principles that they want the country to live by. And what specific principles does the opposite side propose? On which one of many secular ideologies they want Israel to be built on? I said that it is necessary for those who want secular Israel to decide the answer to this question between themselves and then come to the negotiating table with a specific proposal. But I admit, when I said that, I knew that this would never happen. The secular world had many philosophers who offered their ideas of moral norms, ethical values, norms of behavior that were supposed to be replacing the religious principles. But none of these schools of thought ever became an ideology by which people live, with one exception, <laughs> Karl Marx. But this experiment, as we know, did not end very well. When was the last time you saw a man who said that he lives according to the principles of Immanuel Kant? I hope you don't have any friends who follow Machiavelli's ideology. Maybe there are people living according to the worldview of Nietzsche, but I never met one. And if they do exist, I afraid that they will, like him, end up in a psychiatric hospital. So which one of these secular principles do you want for the country to follow? And the most important question, if you yourself do not live by 
any of these ideologies, why would you argue to impose them on the whole country? By contrast, those who propose a Torah-based Israel live by the principles that they want others to follow. If you yourself want to live by picking and choosing your moral values as you go along, and if you want to live by ethical principles without having them defined clearly by a consistent school of thought, it is your business. But a country or a society cannot live like this.